<clears throat> the demons will come to the human world all because of her. You sneaky bitch. She's not sneaky. She's just very loved by some demons, as we're all aware. Within the snap of her fingers, Diana's fingers, I was released from a hold, almost buckling to my knees. Thank you for finally letting me go. Well, will you all change your minds? I assure you, it's for the greater good. Really? I said to the boys to say no. What I heard was complete silence. None of the boys replied to Diana, which made me both nervous and fearful as to why. Diana leaned her head back, a bit surprised for a different reason. No. Well, I see. Wow! Diana, you've got amazing mind reading abilities. Was Silence truly them saying no to her? Could she possibly be reading their minds? I looked around at the boys and saw the disobedience in their eyes, giving me my answer. I felt my heart flutter in especially when my eyes landed on James. He kept close to me, glaring jaggers into Diana. I could feel that he was completely adamant in his choice to stay. I don't know what, but I was incredibly happy to know he wanted to stay. Diana sighed and pressed a finger into a temple, rubbing it gently. Either all of you are playing a very convincing hard to get game, or you all must be out of your minds. Diana then looked to me, locking her gaze in mine as if to read me. I could tell she wanted to do something, but the boys would stop her, so the stare was her only available option. Out of a small amount of silence, Diana licked her lips before breaking the, ba the gaze balance, smiling to the boys around me. Very well. I guess I'll take my leave now. What? Her? Leave? Was she serious? The boys around me straightened up and grew confused the looks on their faces as Diana stepped back and away from us with a small bow, flaunting her key leverage. Oh, I'm glad to know the word she disappeared. Like a bullet straight into the ground. Or doing an impression of a diglet. A deep purple pentagram appeared under her feet and Diana's body slowly sunk into the floor or more like just went <laughs> straight down. As her head vanished into the floor, the pentagram vanished. At once, the boys relaxed and slowly began to return to their spots at the table, each in deep thought. She'll be back, but she won't kill us. She needs us alive. Whatever. We'll just keep saying no. She can't force us to come back. She can't do anything but annoy us. Eventually, she'll give up. That's the hope, anyway. Hopefully. James walked over me and gently caressed my cheek, looking at me with a comforting smile. There's no need to worry. I promise she won't hurt you. I nodded, feeling that he was telling the truth. Or at least a hopeful and comforting thought. James kissed my forehead, however, making me blush and forget what I was thinking about. The sound of collective chuckle and playful smirks whispered through the air, making me blush even more. But the sudden growl that erupted from the man above me made the laughter stop. I didn't see James's face, but I could tell he was glaring at his brothers with his lips on my head. He and I pulled away from each other just as the sound of Naomi's car appeared. I quickly ate my food, waved to the boys, and left confident that nothing was going to happen. Never ever say that nothing will happen before the day is over i avoided talking about the ride back home yesterday saying that the ride was a long time one time thing i'll be riding with you guys from now on to and from school okay less likely to get kidnapped by devils that way the girls seemed very happy we entered the school quickly gathered our things from our lockers and headed to class there were no events to our surprise history wasn't exactly fun but our teacher was great at least, he would have been great if he was in class that day. Naomi and Zuzu took their seats around me. Zuzu in front of me and Naomi beside me. Before the class bell rang and the class was greeted by the dean. Students, you'll be having a substitute for class today. Everyone meet Miss Diana. Ah! My heart stopped. At the door with the dean was Diana, looking over the students and smirking as her eyes landed on me. She strutted to the teacher's desk, ignoring or welcoming the whispers from the other students before sitting on the wood and crossing her legs. Thank you, Dean. You can go now. Wow, she acts like she's more in charge than the Dean. With a wave of Diana's hand, the Dean left the classroom, closed the door and left the area. Diana smiled at us, making my stomach turn. What was she going to do? So, history. 
History, history, history. Such a silly thing, isn't it? I mean, what do we care about the past? We're in the present. I beg to differ. Wait till you get that revenge thing going, sweetie. Then you'll care about the past a lot. The rest of the class, including Naomi and Zuzu, has suddenly not in agreement, I'm sure, but this new teacher, but willing to listen to more of what she had to say. The present is so full of wonderful things. While the labors of the past are the reason we have many things, it is our chance and privilege to utilize what has been given to us. Utilize what has been given to us? In what shape and form? And why have I suddenly got an image of Faye doing that little like battle she was having in the demo from the second one? You know, Diana versus the Demon Lord, and using the description about what Diana's got and what the Demon Lord's got. Her charm was almost infectious. The clat was practically starting to eat out of her hand. I looked around to see my classmates grinning and agreeing with Diana. I pressed my lips together as I listened further. I had no choice. What's even funnier about human beings is that some of the bits of history we hear as either made up or completely biased to one side. It's like a story you read as a child. This, of course, was a history lesson, but not long after, it became story time. You hear of the princess and the prince, and they live happily ever after. But what about the family she left behind? What of her friends? What about the god which clearly has feelings for you, and you are not replicating them? <coughs> the students listened and agreed intently to her words. I could tell, however, that these words were all targeted at me because... Pff, I'm the only one that's called Incubi living in my house. The original story of the Little Mermaid. A perfect example of biased opinion. Here we have a girl who thinks she can be with this prince. But this prince has to marry a princess. Yeah, but at the time, in all fairness, in several representations of that story, the mermaid wasn't made aware that he was, you know, a prince. And also, can I just point out, in Disney's interpretation of the Little Mermaid, the Little Mermaid is actually a mermaid princess, and technically she's after a human prince. They are still princess and prince, so yeah, really bad choice on story there, Diana. Especially if people have been watching Disney's Little Mermaid. What would happen if the mermaid had her way? What makes the mermaid so important that the princess has to suffer the consequences? Um... That's a very good question. But then again, that angle was never explored in several stories. I kept my mouth shut. There was no way I was going to let her get to me. Despite her being the teacher, I was going to ignore her. There was no telling what she could do if I talked back. Diana looked to me, starting me to speak, but I merely stared at her. A smoke graced her face, a glare graced mine. I didn't need to fight to win. It's still something to think about, however, as we think of this story. It's so easy to believe that the mermaid was the heroine. But what of the poor princess? Why should the princess suffer the antics of a mermaid? The princess didn't do anything wrong to her. True. Technically, it was the princess's fault for falling in love with the mermaid, then. You know? You can't really blame two people for falling in love. Um, again, in several different interpretations. There are many ways to look at this. I'm going to keep quiet. I decided this was complete nonsense and just let Diana continue ranting on. There was no need for me to get involved or comment on this story. Continue, please, Diana. Anyway, she continued raving about the injustice of the mermaid princess. The princess suffered at the hands of the mermaid. Like it was war. The boys chose me. He chose me. She wasn't going to convince me otherwise. And they aren't even mermaids. You know. Diana stretched her arms up, making obvious sexual noises that made some of the boys in the class shift <sighs> in their seats. Well, that's enough about fairy tales. After all, the little mermaid was fated to lose her prince in the original story anyway. It was for the better, though. The kingdoms, I'm sure, flourished, and the prince and princess lived happily ever after. Didn't he turn to sea foam? Or, yeah, she didn't want him to turn to sea foam. I 
I'm not gonna go there. Finally, I spoke up. I felt ballsy enough to challenge her at last. The other students in the class, including Naomi and Zeus, returned to look at me both in shock and confusion. Diana looked at me with a smirking smile. Because I have a hunch. You have a hunch, really? That's all you're going to go on? I have a hunch. And tell me, if you got your prince in this story, would you really be happy? I mean, what's to say that the third party in question that we have clearly got loads of evidence to support doesn't get, you know, all that much more... I don't know. Turns into Ursa and starts trying to kill you. What if the prince was incredibly unhappy? Could the princess live with herself knowing that the man she married was unhappy? In that case, the prince and princess's senses of duty would overrule emotion. Their kingdoms would flourish nevertheless, making their people love them and live happy lives. Really? I would just think, we'll be thinking that this is like a tragic false marriage. And at one point, somebody's not going to be able to give that much. And they're just going to turn around and say, no, this is not going to work anymore. We can't keep pretending. I know it's for the people, but still. 